what can you learn from the world's oldest global player? When you read this title, did you imagine what I would talk about? Maybe not. But now, as you have seen me, it's pretty clear. I'm a monk. A monk lives in a monastery in a community of monks after a common rule, and they take the vows. Vows of obedience, chastity, and poverty. And in particular, I'm a Cistercian monk. The Cistercian order was founded in the year 1098, more or less, let's say in the 11th century somewhere in France, and my monastery is in Heiligenkreuz. This is next to Vienna in Austria. Here you can see my monastery. We are living together in a community of 92 persons. So we have quite a long history of 900 years. This is all the monastery where we stay. We are together 92 monks. So what does a monk hear, you might to ask yourself? I want to present you some principles. When we are talking about principles, faith doesn't matter. Maybe just ask yourself, what is a principle? Or are you a principled person? The other way around, do you like to work with an unprincipled person? So it's pretty clear principle is something everyone can understand easily. And when I'm now talking about a bit of the Catholic Church, I don't want to talk about dogmatics. If you're interested in this, you can buy a book or join my lectures of theology. Here I like to focus on the organization, on one of the most ancient organizations we have. And this is, from the beginning, a global player. Everything started with a person. The person is called Jesus Christ, and it was in Jerusalem. Shortly after the death of Jesus Christ, they moved the headquarter to Rome. I'm sure you know St. Peter's Square or the Basilica. This is the headquarter of the Catholic Church. On the top of this organization is the Pope. The first one was Peter. He led the church up to the year circa 64 AD. And after him, 254 other successors, up to the actual one, Pope Francis, and I'm sure you know him. So, there's quite an old and long tradition. On the top is the Pope. And there are four, more than 400,000 priests. They are working with the people and for the people. You can call them key account managers. And in between, between the Pope and the key account managers, there are bishops. Let's say in a business language, they are regional managers. And out of this history and this worldwide structure, you can learn something. Because the church in our days is in one of its biggest transformation processes. There are so many offers and varieties of different possibilities to 
understand what is humankind, here is one. What is the market share of the Catholic Church? There are no living more than seven billion people in the world. Out of them, 1.2 billion are Catholics. So we can say we have a market share of more or less 20%. And out of this history, you can ask yourself, what have they done? It's clear. In 2,000 years, you make a lot of good and also bad things. But when you make a mistake, be honest and look with courage on your mistake so that you don't make the same mistake a second time. And therefore, I want to present you four principles. These are the principles of sustainability, personality, solidarity, and subsidiarity. But let's go through them one by one. The first, sustainability. Maybe you ask yourself, is this really something new? You're right. Sustainability is in the mind of everybody in our days. Even the United Nations, they have taken the concept of sustainability to integrate it in their plan for saving our planet. So you see that one of those principles has already found the way in our common life. The second principle is personality. What does this mean? Every person is unique. Every person is unrepeatable. Every person has the same value. And when you take into account this principle, just look in your life, maybe in your company, how do we treat people? How do we work together with people? And which, in particular, business language do we use when we are describing the people and the company? We are talking about human resources. What does this mean? Is really the man or the woman in the middle? Or is it just a kind of raw material production factor? So when you are reflecting about the principle of personality, look, how do I treat people? Principle number three, solidarity. Solidarity is something between mankind. You have seen this just remember the Hurricane Katrina in the United States of America, or this hor horrible earthquake in Nepal. There was an immediate response from all people over the world to help the poorest. They lost everything. So you can imagine there is something between you and me, something between all human beings to help each other. But not only in the global perspective, also in the personal and private perspective. So, look, how do my colleague feel? What can I do for him? Often I can see it, but do I really respond? The fourth principle is the most difficult, even to pronounce. Subsidiarity. Maybe you have never ever heard this word, but I will explain it to you. Imagine a family. There are the parents and the children. 
When the children are growing up step by step, the parents give them more freedom. They can explore the world, they can learn something. So, they are growing up. And the same can we use and transfer to other social contexts. Just think about your co a company. You have a team, and as a team leader, there's the boss. What does he do? Is he always controlling you? Is he always looking, asking? Or does he give you some freedom to develop your ideas? And this principle was very helpful during all those years in the history of my organization. So when you go through, come back to the first one, sustainability. Because when you try to integrate those principles in your personal life to be a better manager, to be more successful, then try to be sustainable every day. Start new. Start and integrate it. And when you look in the academic sector, where do we talk about topics like leadership? Then this is the field of leadership ethics. Just look in the newspapers, you see so many scandals, not only in the car industry, also in other fields. And therefore, I founded an institute, an institute for leadership ethics, or like I want to say in German, Institute für Führungsethik. And there, I'm working together with managers and students, and we try to help the companies and the managers to be better managers and to, ev to avoid those horrible mistakes we have seen in the last weeks and years. Coming to the end, I want to say, quote an HHL alumnus. Rolf Schrömkens, he is the founder and actual CEO of Trivago. He said, five years ago, I was convinced that governance issues can be solved just by aligning incentives between managers and the company. But now I know that does not work out. You need a strong set of values and a plea for ethical behavior. The presented principles, they should help you to be a more ethical manager, to be more successful in business and private life. Just try it out, step by step every day. And therefore, I wish you luck. Thank you very much.